we, we want to offer some perhaps extravagant statements as to what climate change is. We would suggest that it is a relationship between us and nature, between us and each other, between humanity and all other species on this planet. We would suggest that that relationship is ever evolving and that that evolution of that relationship requires consistent curation, curis <laughs> consistent stewardship, conscious intention, conscious commitment, resolute courage to face whatever learning, whatever change must be faced in order for us to continue to develop as a species and to keep ourselves in enough harmony with the planet that we don't damage it or ourselves irrevocably. So we wanna talk about symptoms versus causes of climate change and the interplay of these two positionalities as we solve for climate change. Certainly the temperatures are going up. Certainly uh, icebergs are, are being created as they calve off of the, the Antarctic. And certainly we're having more storms and fires and drought. We would suggest that those are symptoms. So the symptoms are different than the causes and they're interwoven. And we'll give you an example of that. We would suggest that the, the causes of climate change are human activity on this planet. And they are creating catastrophes, fires, floods, and droughts. And that said, and those would be the symptoms. And, and that said, if we, uh, if we create a lot more technology to deal with the fires, floods, and droughts, or the rise in temperature, does it make sense that that technology is part of what's causing climate change, causing the symptoms in the first place? So we would suggest that it's vitally important that we understand that our process of trying to solve for climate change may in part be causing it simultaneous to us, us experiencing the symptoms of climate change. Now, there's a lot of resistance in humanity in this moment in regard to mapping and understanding and accepting the challenges that we're facing in regard to climate change. We don't want to understand that we are creating it. We don't want to understand our place in it. We don't want to understand what's necessary to change in our lives as individuals and nations and organizations in order to resolve climate change. There's a built-in part of the human system that says, I don't want to change and I don't want to learn. Uh, I, I want to focus on attaining what I want and, <clears throat> and experiencing what I want in life. And I want to prioritize that more highly than understanding climate change and being willing to foundationally and fundamentally change my life in order to solve it. So we would suggest that this process of mapping the, the resistance and the cause and effect dynamics is, is vitally important. Understanding the difference between the causes and the symptoms and, and the interplay between causes and symptoms is vitally important. We wanna talk about what people are experiencing in regard to climate change versus how the process of climate change is mentally conceptualized and often disassociated from. So for example, if you have lived in California and you have experienced the fires and the smoke or the drought or the extreme weather, or if you've lived in Louisiana or Florida and experienced hurricanes uh, or in other parts of the United States, then you would have experienced effects and symptoms of climate change personally, and, and you could probably resonate, relate to that uh, experience very well. It doesn't mean that you understand the totality of the, uh, the global shifts that are occurring. So this experience can be of, of feeling the, the flames, so to speak, or experiencing the hurricanes or the drought, that can be quite motivating to do something about climate change, or at least to try to understand it. That doesn't mean that if you just focus on a mental understanding of what's going on in the world, that you're really going to get it. 
we must blend our experience as well as our new understandings and our mental constructs of what climate change is and what it isn't, how it affects us, how it's going to affect us, and, and not emotionally disassociate from it and say, well, I certainly understand all of the dynamics of plastics affecting climate change or pollution or fossil fuel burning. I understand those intellectually and I don't get them emotionally. And because I don't get them emotionally, I, I'm not motivated to do anything constructive and fundamental and comprehensive in terms of changing my life and the, the lives of my family or my nation or our species in, in terms of how we operate in regard to climate change.